This is a little poem that someone made up about Gregor Mendel. Mendel the modest monk planted the garden pea to find out why you look like you, whereas I tend to look more like me. People, of course, had always said as they peered into the baby's bed, he looks like his father, but not like his mother. He has the same nose as his grandfather's brother. Farmers for centuries knew this was true of animals, fruits, and the crops they grew. And so, for example, they carefully bred a short-legged dog to crawl under a shed and chase away foxes and weasels and moles and follow quick rabbits down rabbity holes. But the breeding was frequently hit or miss, and sometimes the puppies would look like this. Some scientists working with plants as their tools tried to discover some definite rules, but plants, just like people, had so many traits, so many sizes, shapes, colors, and weights, that scientists piling up notes in great stacks were utterly baffled by so many facts. But Mendel, the monk, thought, I know what I'll do. I'll choose opposite traits and follow them through. Methinks I will study the garden pea to look for the whys of heredity. I'll choose size of plant or I'll choose shape of seed. But for only one thing at a time, I will breed. So he put two pea seeds into the ground. One was wrinkled and one was round. And when they had offspring, guess what he found? Guess if their offspring were wrinkled or round? Did you guess half were wrinkled and half were round? That's one wrong guess, because here's what he found. Every one of their offspring was round. So he put the offspring into the ground. Everyone, as we know, was round. And when they sprouted, guess what he found? Did you guess that all of their offspring were round? That's two wrong guesses, because here's what he found. One was wrinkled, and three were round. But what, you ask, does this lowly pea have to do with you and me? Well... Mendel wondered if every trait comes to peas and children straight from one parent to the other, which is why both you and I look just like our father and mother. Unless, of course, they're very small and you are over six feet tall. And both of them have tiny feet while yours reach halfway down the street. Mendel was puzzled by problems like these, so he studied the traits of 10,000 peas. Wrinkled and round are true tra two traits of a pea. Thousands of traits make up you and me. Today we know what a trait really means. It's a characteristic made up of some genes. A gene is a tiny part of a cell, and a cell is the start of you and me. Millions of genes inside our cells help shape our looks and what we will be. One bundle of genes comes down from your ma. The other you get by way of your pa. 
All of which means you're the mix of their genes. Some genes are bold. Some genes are shy. One shows right away. One shows by and by. Every trait has at least two genes, which combine in at least four ways. The genes may be dominant-dominant, which results in a dominant trait, or recessive-recessive, which results in a recessive trait. Or dominant-recessive, which results in a dominant trait, or recessive-dominant, which results in a dominant trait. A shy gene is called a recessive gene, and like wrinkledness, it is not always seen. A bold gene is called a dominant gene, for like roundness in peas, it always is seen. If of two genes one is dominant, that trait will be most prominent. For example, in human beings, the curly gene always will dominate over the gene for hair that is straight. So if your mama has curly hair, at least one dominant gene is there. If Papa's hair is straight, that means Papa has two recessive genes. For if one dominant gene were there, Papa, of course, would have curly hair. Though your folks have two genes for a trait, they each pass but one gene to you, which means for that given trait, you don't get four genes, you get two. Some examples. If mom has two genes for curly and pop has two genes for straight, that means you'll inherit a gene of each kind, but the curly will dominate. Or, if mom has one gene for curly and one gene for hair that is straight, and pop has two straight haired genes, what is your inherited fate? You may get the straight gene from mom and another straight gene from your pop, in which case, though mom has curly hair, you will have straight hair on the top. However, it's only fair to say that it might happen the opposite way. You might inherit ma's curly gene and the straight hair gene from your pop, in which case, Despite your papa's straight hair, you'll inherit your mama's mop. But suppose mom and pop both have curly hair, and yours is as straight as a stick. You may well think it's most unfair of nature to play such a trick. Not so, for each has a gene for straight hair, and you got one from your mom, one from your pop, and one inside you, they made a pair, which accounts for the funny flip-flop. It's more than a question of curly or straight, for genes determine your every trait. Have you a dimple on your chin? Is your leg bone long and thin? Is your iris blue or green, gray or brown, or in between? Are you partly colorblind? Is your jaw bone well defined? Do you have a beauty mark? Is it itchy? Is it dark? Have you freckles on your nose, long or short or pointed toes? Is your skin more dark than fair? Is your head more round than square? Is your blood type A or B? That's due to heredity. Do you have a belly button? Oh, 
So do we all. It don't mean nothing. Are you a boy, a girl, or a snake? If you're a snake, then there's been some mistake. To sum up, a shy gene may skip a whole generation, then meet up with its mate in a distant relation. Such was the case of my great uncle Fred when two shy genes met inside and said, Freddy, old chap, like we always say, better late than never. For now we have two recessive genes can dominate you forever. For Freddy, you see, has a flaming red beard in a family where only black beards appeared. Which seems rather odd, if not downright weird. All of which means, though I know it sounds silly, you may strongly resemble your dear old Aunt Tilly, or even your grandfather's great uncle Billy. Such are the laws of heredity which concern you, me, and the P.